This is how we testify. Raise him! Ugh. You're just making rock and roll worse. Green Day is the only band ever to call their own album shit and still sell 20 million copies. The pop punk legends, still highly regarded in that field, that have seen a slow decline over the years. And yes, I must clarify pop punk or I'm gonna have to deal with the firing squad after I post this video. Green Day really hit peak popularity in the mid 2000s with the release of American Idiot. Nowadays, this album may seem like nothing special outside of just being a good ass album, but back then, its outspoken themes against the government becoming such a mainstream success was a pretty big deal. They had the balls to call George Bush the F word, and they had that shit playing in every mall across America. If you want a good idea of Green Day's success around this time period, just watch the video of Smiley Ball singing Boulevard of Broken Dreams, uploaded when some of you were just a mere concept. It is at this point that Green Day's career starts to slip. After a five year gap, their follow-up album 21st Century Breakdown failed to live up to expectations. It still had some hits, but with a bloated track listing and songs generally considered mid, it did not have great critical response. I mean, do you really think a band is at peak creativity when they're taking notes from Pokemon music? One, Downward Spiral continued in the 2012 when they released the trilogy of albums Uno, Dos, and Trey, and it went over as well as you'd think releasing three albums in a three month period would go. The 2016 album Revolution Radio generally fell on deaf ears in terms of publicity, but those who did listen were met with an amalgamation of Green Day trying to capture the sound of Dookie and American Idiot, which resulted in, oh that was okay, I think I'll go listen to Dookie and American Idiot now. And that brings us to 2020, their 13th album, The Return to Punk, as it was advertised, Father of All Motherfuckers. Punk is so back, dude, they said fuck on the cover. This infamous billboard sums it up pretty well. No features, no Swedish songwriters, and no trap beats. None of that mumble garbage like Gucci Gang. 100% pure uncut rock, which is also what every radio station says before they transition into playing Believer by Imagine Dragons. This ain't your granny station. First things Just a complete boomer marketing campaign, which is completely out of character for Green Day. But the idea was a garage rock revival, and the lead singer Billy Joe Armstrong said that they were also taking notes from glam rock on this album. Glam rock? Huh? That? Man, all signs were pointing to 100% pure uncut cock. Even the cover is pretty hideous. It's the American Idiot cover defiled with a bunch of random shit. A new logo made from Nickelodeon Gak. Graffiti and an epic unicorn mascot that was probably just put there so they could pump out merch. To be fair, it does look like something you could make a plush of and seeing girls would have killed each other over. But too little too late. It's 2020. Mall's closed, buddy. Uh, I gotta talk about music now. Okay, well, it's a good thing that this is the shortest album of Green Day's career, clocking in at only 26 minutes with 10 tracks. So let's get right into it with track number one, the title track, Father of All. And exactly one track in is when the advertising campaign starts to reveal itself as a complete farce. 100% pure uncut rock would imply it sounds something like this. But no, it sounds like this. Uncut my ass, this song celebrates Hanukkah. The guitar tone is so cleaned up and overproduced to the point where it just sounds generic. A lot of people like to throw around the term car commercial music to describe songs that sound really similar to those generic, often royalty-free rock songs you see in car commercials. Get the all new 2024 Ram 1500 pickup with 5.7 milliliter V8 engine because you got a big ass car. Well, I wouldn't even go as far to call this car commercial music. This is Nintendo Switch commercial music. The perfect amount of nuanced, non offensive rock that serves its purpose to hype up a crowd. The tropes are all pretty obvious, from the clean guitar I've talked about to the chant-like chorus that use extremely simple rhymes. Billy Joe even changes his vocal style to sound something more like the White Stripes or Royal Blood. 
Again, generic car commercial music. They even added clapping on the downbeat like, come on. We haven't heard someone so desperate for audience engagement since Jeb. Please clap. Please clap. You might be saying, well, it's the lead single. It's meant to reach a wide audience, yeah? Well, here's the thing. It didn't. I mean, the first time I heard it is when it got snuck into a Beat Saber pack. When you consider that, the song actually failed at its purpose twice. It was meant to be a statement on how the world was turning into chaos, but Green Day was here to say fuck all that and unite everyone with a taste of real punk that quote had balls. But the lyrics are so vague that practically everything is left up to interpretation. Yeah, it could be about this guy, but it could also be about this guy or this guy, whatever you want. With this, they're basically trying to make a political statement without actually saying anything profound, which is what needs to be done to make any sort of impact. But that's the thing that makes directly outspoken music like Rage Against the Machine still relevant 30 years later and makes music like this dead on arrival. 2 out of 10. If you thought the previous track was just a little too hardcore, then Fire Ready Aim might be your speed. We are really pushing the limits of what can still be considered punk. Is going to Walmart in a Ramones t-shirt punk? If so, then yeah, maybe this song is punk. But we aren't even in Switch commercial tier anymore. We are now in Dan Schneider sitcom tier. Everything you could think of that encapsulates a generic arena song is here. Overproduced, clean as hell, clapping on the downbeat, numerous ah. Ooh. Repetitive structure, synths, and nothing of value lyrically. It's worth noting that this song opened up for Wednesday Night Hockey on NBC Sports when Green Day partnered with the NHL. Hell yeah, in terms of punk, hockey's right up there with uh, modern Green Day. Clearly the punk aspect of this album has been thrown to the side because there's no way a punk band songwriting would be influenced by a billion dollar corporation, right? Corporate scumbags, or whatever those scary looking people always say. Green Day tried to deliver the message here of just shut up and rock out, but just saying that doesn't make you immune to criticism, and it sure as hell doesn't make me want to rock out. Even once you've accepted the change in direction, Fire Ready Aim is still a generic, overproduced crowd pleaser that is practically just begging you to get up from the bleachers and cheer and also to catch NHL on NBC Sports. It's offensively safe and sterile to the point where this shit doesn't even sound like Green Day anymore. One and a half out of ten. Track three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. If you didn't like Fire Ready Aim, well uh, bad news buddy because this one is just that song but slower. Listen, it has the same exact chord progression. Fun Green Day fact, this is the first time that they've ever sampled another song, and they chose Joan Jett's Do You Wanna Touch Me, Oh Yeah. Oh yeah. Hence the name of the song. It kind of sounds like they sampled just a little more than that line though. Really it feels like the whole song's been recycled using decomposed hard rock from the 80s. The simplistic drum lines, the guitar chord progression, with a singer that sounds like somebody's constantly twisting on his nipples. They got all the makings of a classic arena rock song, yet they fucked that up too. Billy Joe's vocals have a different distortion effect on them for almost every line, and it just ends up sounding jarring. The chorus will feel like generic synth pop dance music with its electronics and vocal reverb and uninspiring chorus, and it'll just go back to generic four chord commercial rock. It's like Green Day trying to be Def Leppard and party rock anthem simultaneously. A true nightmare blunt rotation. 2 out of 10. Track 4, Meet Me on the Roof. This song made me have a huge realization that this album is fucking lame. I mean, this is Green Day, they aren't exactly hardcore, but
But classic songs like Basket Case, Hitchin' a Ride, Brain Stew, and even the softer hits like When September Ends and Good Riddance, at least they make me feel something. What does Meet Me on the Roof make me feel like? Well, I feel like our friend on the cover here. Just Technicolor vomiting out all this upbeat power pop garbage that I've been fed. The super bubbly instrumental is unbelievably generic and it makes me feel nothing. There's nothing dynamic, there's no build up to anything. Actually, it does make me feel something. It makes me feel annoyed because it sounds exactly like royalty free music. Some Indian woman is using this song in her recipe video on how to make tandoori chicken. Tandoori roasted masala chicken ki recipe jo bahut hi tasty banega aur jhat pat se aap When that thought enters my head when listening to this song and I look on the cover and I see Green Day's name on it, that's when I just gotta stop and think about things. And the vocals have not gotten better. Really out of range and I hate Billy Joe's high pitched falsetto backing vocals. Every song is filled with and this track integrates them into verses and chorus. This is getting half a point and I think that's more than fair. If you got the gall to sell me royalty free music, then that's all you get. The fuck? Moving on to track 5, I Was a Teenage Teenager. Well, I'll spoil it for you right now, this is the best song on the album so far. Just like how the shit I took yesterday was better than the shit I took this morning. I don't wanna freak you out, but I can lie. I Was a Teenage Gary starts off with something that so far has been fucking unheard of, a bass guitar, which turns out is actually the best part of the song. The lyrics are pretty awful and not to mention lazy since the whole song is just the same verse and chorus repeated ad nauseum. And what does teenage teenager even mean? Sounds like some corny shit Weezer would come up with. Grow the fuck up! Matter of fact, this whole song just sounds like Weezer. Same structure, same sound, similar vocal flow. Even the solo sounds like a Weezer solo, but you know, without a Buddy Holly riff, so it's fucking worthless. You are not the. You're not capable of being the. It's closer to Green Day than anything we've gotten so far, but this song drags. It's the longest of the album, clocking in at 3 minutes and 44 seconds, but that's not a long song, not even for Green Day standards. Good lord! Teenage Dirtbag gets a 3 out of 10. Next track, Stab You in the Heart. When they said they were bringing back rock, I didn't think they were talking that far back. This song takes a clear inspiration from the early days of rock and roll with a modern spin. And it don't, it don't work. Instead of building off the template of a rock and roll song, it's just the same damn thing. It's got the random electronic elements that were used because they were new at the time and a female backing vocalist. This all comes together to create an experience where I question myself, what the fuck am I even listening to? Who am I listening to? This ain't Green Day. This is Turquoise Century. It turns out Stab You in the Heart is a reworking of a song, You Broke My Heart, that was from Billy's musical, These Paper Bullets. But the main riff is also used from their song, Fuck Time, from Dose, which is ripped off from the goddamn hippie hippie shake. I got the hippie hippie shakes. How many layers of recycling are we on here? You can only be inspired so much before everything starts to fall into place, and you see that this is just a cobbled together mess of ideas from unsuccessful projects and now you're trying to fit them all into this horribly overproduced pop rock compilation. This ain't Elvis. This is the monstrous yeah. shit that killed them. 2 out of 10. Track 7 Sugar Youth deeply confuses me because it's actually decent. It's fast paced, high energy, good bass. Feels like Green Day was trolling its fans, teasing them with these awful <laughs> car commercial singles, and the album comes out and they're like, <laughs> the look on your guys' faces. Okay, here's the real music. But that's not the case because we're seven tracks in, which confuses me even more. It's like a timeline shift where we got track seven from the good version of Father of All, and an alternate universe got the Green Day cover of Dolly Parton.
sure yes. the youth is all right. It's a nice break from the monotony, but it's over quick and doesn't offer a whole lot. I give it a 5 out of 10. Sounds like something that could be from the American Idiot era. And that's because it is. It's a repurposed version of the song She's a Rebel from American Idiot. Well, in that case, never mind. Zero out of ten. Write some new songs, you fucking schlemiels. <laughs> Moving along to track eight, Junkies on a High. If you were to take AM Arctic Monkeys and Boulevard of Broken Dreams, fed that into an algorithm, told it to write a new song, and then you took that song and translated it into 15 Middle Eastern languages and then back into English, you would get Junkies on a High. This song doesn't even feel like it wants to exist. It's mind-numbingly low energy from a generic main riff, more grating falsetto backing vocals, and a fake-ass inspirational Imagine Dragons verse. My mama said to me, you're gonna have your enemies. All that's missing is a music video that takes place in an abandoned warehouse. I couldn't find that, but I could find this fan-made video where it set the scenes from the Joker movie. Instant 10 out of 10. This right here is Kino. Shout out to Jelkin Phoenix. I haven't noted anything about the lyrics in a while because, well, you're not really missing anything. You want to know what you're missing? That. There you go. Kool-Aid's my motto. Oh yeah. That's what you're missing. Fucking genius, am I right? I do find this line to be pretty funny foreshadowing, though. The last three songs have been hack job repurposing of old material, and it clearly shows that Green Day was 007. Zero ideas, zero motivation, seven exclusive vinyl variants. This was a desperate attempt to capture fans' attention. Going back to what I said about the cover, it reflects on the music too. American Idiot with just a bunch of random shit thrown onto it. Junkies on a High gets a 2 out of 10. Track 9, Take the Money and Crawl, which is exactly what Green Day did after the disastrous release of this album. Nope, this one's directed at the record label. Gotta have the obligatory Fuck the Record Label song of my favorite. This was actually the last album Green Day made before they broke a contractual agreement with Warner, which we will get to later. <laughs> Take the money sounds like shit, plain and simple. Super loud, super overproduced for no reason, awful vocal effects to top it all off. Verses are painfully dull and the lyrics suck. There's this part in the end where Billy says, take a walk or suck my cock, which is supposed to be this epic moment, but it's too little too late. Your ass is going in a car commercial. And we don't say suck my cock here at General Motors. Take the Money and Crawl is bad, but not offensively bad. It's over quick, and some might say it's fun, but I'm still gonna give it a 3 out of 10. To end the album, we gotta face the final boss of awful Green Day music, Track 10, Graffiti. Why do I call it that? Well, it's because it's everything they've done wrong so far, stapled together to create this Frankenstein monster that perfectly represents every aspect that makes this album insufferable to listen to. I want to take a moment to bring up the most unwanted song, an experiment by the artists Komar and Melamed and Dave Soldier, to create the scientifically worst song possible. To do this, they pulled people on what they didn't want to hear in music and created a song combining all of those elements. The result is a 22 minute long song that contains elements of western themed rap, opera, children's choir, folk, elevator music with very blatant political messaging, inconsistent volumes, and it all ends in a verse about coming together as one. Now Graffiti, one of the longest songs in the album, contains elements of pop, punk, opera style singing, acoustic melodies, piano with very blatant political messaging about the prejudice against black people in America, inconsistent volumes, and to top it all off, it ends in a verse about coming together as one. What I'm saying is Green Day has basically inadvertently made the most unwanted song in their own style. Granted, 
Graffiti is everything you've already heard, but worse. Sickingly upbeat like Meet Me on the Roof. Generic arena rock like Oh Yeah in the title track. Now accompanied by a cheesy piano. Then out of nowhere, Billy hits you with the another black kid was shot in town line. The juxtaposition between that and the Panera Bread ass, shopping at Target ass, picking Aiden up from soccer practice ass riff, is just confusing. Now this isn't just the worst parts of Green Day, it's the worst parts of 2020. Police brutality and horribly out of touch millionaires making acoustic covers of songs from their home over quarantine. I forgot the fucking lyrics. If this was a deliberate troll just to piss people off, it would get a 10 out of 10. I cannot think of a way to make this song sound more infuriating aside from making it slowed and reverbed. But since I'm 99% sure that it's serious, Graffiti gets half a point. Because at least it's better than mumble rap, am I right guys? It's not actually a form of music, it's a, it's a form of rhythmic speaking. This album is straight dog shit. I've been thinking about how despite them dropping this giant steaming turd after a decade of mediocrity, they didn't really suffer from it. Green Day just released their 14th album and they, they got songs in Fortnite. You look at other giant steaming turds in the music industry, like Chances the Big Day or Results May Vary by Limp Biscuit, that practically killed their respective careers, and in case of Limp Biscuit, it took them decades just to recover, until barely being able to hold on to relevancy 20 years later as some self aware legacy band. But I'm less interested in logistics because it's pretty self explanatory. Green Day is loved by millions, they're a great band, and they have a legacy. What I'm more interested in it's just what the hell was going on behind the scenes for this album. As I said before, this was Green Day's last album to fulfill a contractual agreement with Warner. When this came out, people genuinely thought that this was a deliberate sabotage, like a fuck you to Warner. I mean, you look at the short runtime, the reused songs, the lack of quality, the lack of Swedish songwriters, it seems deliberately low effort. Billy even had the idea of originally calling it American Idiot 2 to quote, piss people off. What if we fucked with everybody and called the record American Idiot Part 2? But the truth is oftentimes disappointing. It would seem that everything they said during press was true and that this was just their best attempt to make a modern garage rock album. Was the advertising hammed up? Most definitely. I mean, I've, I've shown this billboard like 50 times now. It's just great. In conclusion, this wasn't a fuck you to Warner, it was a fuck you to the entire world. They wrote what they wanted to and what they thought was good old genuine rock that had balls. But they thought wrong. Father of All feels like a commercial that I can't skip. When it's not being the most uninspiring, uneventful background music you've ever heard in your entire life, it's being music with imposter syndrome that fails to capture any identity of its own and hides as a bad filler track on an already short album. Father of All gets a final score of 1.8 out of garbage. 10. You actually like this? Unless you are a die-hard Green Day fan with the clenched fist of American Idiot shoved deeply inside of your rectum, I can't recommend this album to anyone who likes to be even remotely challenged by the music that they listen to. But if you like what you heard, you can click the YouTube Studio button, check out the Audio Library tab, and filter by rock genre to find more rockin' tunes that sound just like Father of All. So much more exciting because you can just put anything out. Yeah. You know, who knows? I'm, maybe I'll be a SoundCloud rapper. <laughs>